Hey guys, it's Coffee. Eh? Uh, I'm just going to be looking at some hand history reviews. I'm looking at specific interesting hands and analyzing them in depth. Um, I think that, you know, while looking through entire games can be a great way to find leaks and to analyze overall game plans, um, oftentimes, you know, in order to maximize our study time, it can be really um, optimal to look at specific hands that gave us problems. You know, the ones that we're sure we're unsure of. And, you know, in that way, we avoid the spots that we were pretty sure we were, you know, playing correctly and uh, maximize our study time. So, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. And it's going to be um, a series of videos that I'm going to be doing now is looking at interesting hands. And so um, without further ado, uh, let's get started. Eight nine, um, I'm actually limping this pre, likely. Um, there's some villains where we can min-race. Um, we would definitely need to have a read, I think, that villain doesn't three bet much, though. Um, just because limping is just really, really good at this stuff. I mean, it's it's very similar though. I mean, and there are definitely villains where um, min raising is better, just because we might lose value limping, um, because they do flat so much, and we're gonna play you know quite well versus them post. But uh, limping is definitely something to strongly consider at this depth, and um, I probably prefer it readings, but it's really close. Um, certainly betting now, and um, you know, I would bet small. I would bet like forty. Um. You know, at most. I guess 45 is okay. Um, um, you know, I even lean towards less just because we don't mind getting floated that much since we have two overs. And at the same time, um, we really, you know, when we do get check raise, we're, we are toast and we want to lower um, how much we lose that spot. Um, and now we're in a weird spot. I mean, uh, I do think we should be barreling um, because villain's range is pretty capped. Uh, there are some gut shots, which makes things interesting, but um, but we also have a gut shot, and you know we have a gut shot draw than that. So um, yeah, I, I would bet here, um, and I think something like a hundred does the trick. Um, you know, but I, I think the thing to think about though is that the villain has a lot of over cards when he floats us on this kind of texture, and so you know we do very well folding. I mean, we fold all of them out on this turn. So there are a large number of turn folds we get, and and also notice that like a lot of two x three x folds. Yeah, we don't expect him to flat that much, but there's, I mean, there's queen two, queen three. There is some of that kind of stuff. Um, so, I, but, but yeah, it's a little bit on the close side just because, yeah, you know, obviously we're not folding any fives. And um, so, yeah, but I would bet here. I do think we get enough fold equity. And I also think we don't get raised much, which is a big deal. You know, because we do have a gut shot, um, we don't actually need very much fold equity if we're not getting raised because we can, um, you know, value bet rivers. And so, you know, if we had bet the turn and gotten flatted, I probably would just ship River um, because I think Villain's range will be pretty capped. Um, I do think most Villains would probably raise us um, with a four on that turn because they're two flush uh, possibilities. So, um, and has played? Huh. Um, it's close to wanting to bluff here, but I think I wouldn't just because I don't actually think most fish will fold at this point um, a two, a three. Maybe they'll fold a two, but I don't think they'll fold a three. Um, and they'll never fold a five or six. So I, I would just give up at this point. It's kind of close. We don't have great shutout value. Oh, well. Um, the turn is the spot to bluff, not here, I think. So I, I would have bet that that happened on the turn. And yeah, <laughs> Villain's not folding a three. So yeah. Um, but again, I mean, I think that Villain likely does fold a three on the turn. Um, they're much more likely to fold on the turn, I think. Even though the ace is a scary card, they're more likely to fold on the turn because they're facing the, the, the you know, the, the, um, the threat of a future bet. Um, you know, and, and also Villain kind of, you know, when you check back the turn, they're convinced that you don't have a straight too. Um, that you don't have very much value. So, you know, checking back makes your range look weaker, which it does. It makes your range weaker. Um, and, and so, you know, villains will also serve as that you can fit, and they're more likely to call you on river. So, yeah, I, I would be giving up on this river as played, but um, the turn is a bet because we do have two overs and a gut shot. Um, and we don't expect to get check raised much. Right. Um, I need reads to flat here. It's kind of close to flat. Well, okay, this is fine. A flat here is fine. Um, but it's very close. Um, there are a ton of players where I'm very, very, very happy to fold pre because they're so tight at this depth. Um, I don't know this guy very well. I think I played him, but I don't know him very well. Um, and 
And so, yeah, we're, we're dual checking, obviously. I do think we expect a pretty wide C betting range on this kind of texture at this depth. Um, you know, there's not much value donking on this kind of texture. Um, and now it's just an issue whether we can check raise or not. And I actually don't think we can um, because we just don't get a value. Um, there just aren't enough hands that suddenly stack off um, or continue. So I would be flatting here. Um, and yeah, I mean, we need. I, I would want a read to want to do this. Um, a read that villain is sort of aggro, a little spewy, and is capable of shoving over with like an ace five or something like that. Um, readless, I think that we just get a lot of faults. I mean, I actually think this is a decent spot to check raise bluff um, because villain will have so much air in his range. Um, but all right, uh, it's not so bad. We do have a big hand and um, just shove turn. Yeah. Fine. But yeah. And I, I, I would have checked called flop and check called turn. Maybe a check folded river, depending on the river, but don't really expect to get three barreled like ever. Call pre looks good. Um, this is a flop I'm probably donking because um, I do expect to get checked back a decent amount, but it's close. I think check calling here is okay as well. Um, I don't think we should check raise, to be honest. Like, I just don't think we get much to continue that we, you know, that we beat. Um, I mean, we get Queen X to stack off and some flush draws, but we don't get flush draws to stack off, sorry. We get some Queen X to stack off that we beat, but eh, not that much. And certainly, you know, Queen Jack and King Queen still beat us. So yeah, I like the check call there. And I would lead this turn. Um, this is a turn where suddenly we can lead it, we can rep some flush draws. Um, Villain has to continue with all, I mean, he's continuing with all his queen anyways, but this is a spot where Villain will oftentimes check back a big chunk of his range, because it is a scary turn to barrel for a lot of a lot of fish. Um, so so I would be betting this turn myself, actually, for value. Um, I think we lose value check, uh, checking, because Villain will check back a big, big percent of time. And um, as played, I, I'm actually just check-raise shoving here, um, you know, when he does bet out. Because again, I expect him to check back a big portion of his weaker hands. And so when I do see him bet, I think that he, I'm pretty sure he has a made hand here. And I'm confident, pretty confident we're ahead. And he can certainly put us on a lot of draws if we shove over here. So I don't think he's folding very much. So I, I would be shoving um, the turn. And um, okay, uh, as played, yeah, leads okay. I don't really expect Bill to bluff this kind of river ever. Um, or thin value bet. So this is fine. Fine. We got 